Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 7. Today we're going to be doing my review slash breakdown for Episode 3, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this episode is technically the finale, because Episode 3 marks the end of the Season 6 storyline, so Eva is gone, Eva is finished at the end of this episode, and we're not going to see her again at least for a very long time. So yeah, episode three was very good and it was very entertaining. I think it had a lot to live up to in terms of the episode before because episode two had so many surprising twists and turns that we really weren't expecting. And so I think this episode did a very good job following on. However, I don't think it's like as good as episode two. I thought episode two was a really, really solid episode, like maybe one of the best ones they've ever done. So yeah, this episode was very good, and it definitely lived up to it, even if it wasn't quite as good. However, there is a lot of stuff that we need to go over, and we're going to go over throughout this whole video, so please be sure to stick around, because we have a lot of stuff to go through. So we had that crazy cliffhanger, there is a lot to break down right there, because like there is a few possibilities to do with that lightning at the end. But for now, let's go ahead and start at the start of the episode. So Cisco wakes up, and if you guys remember at the end of the last episode, Barry pulled Iris out of the Mirrorverse, and basically the rest of the Team Flash is left and knocked out on the ground. Well. They wake up and that is where we begin the episode and so they confront Barry and they see Barry is back to normal and Barry is crying in front of Iris. He's realized the mistake that he's done and they basically are like, yeah, forget about it. Like we know it wasn't you, even though Barry is taking notice that it definitely was something with inside of him and he doesn't want to ignore it, which I guess is a little bit admirable. So, so we see Iris and all of her neural pathways have been rerouted. So basically her brain is pretty much fried because of the Mirrorverse and so there is something off and we will get back to that later in the video because something major happens with Iris in terms of her Mirrorverse powers out in the real world. Okay, so yeah, Team Flash makeup, Barry is done with the artificial speed force. He basically is like, we need to find something that's natural and so as of right now, Barry doesn't have a speed at the start of the episode and this leads to them returning and sparking off the original speed force and we'll get to that in a minute because that's one of the major moments of the episode and it's a lot to freak out about. So yeah, let's go ahead and continue. So Sue Dearborn is back and you have Ralph back and it's uh, really funny because Ralph is literally like some melting pot. Like it's literally him, but they've CGI'd him so he's melting and I couldn't help but laugh. It was so funny and I mean it was a very humorous way to kind of say goodbye to the character and we'll get back to Ralph later when we get to the later scene where he returns with Sue and Sue is basically offered a role on Team Flash. And so the main other storyline throughout this episode is with Joe and Cecile and basically it all kicks off when Sue shows up at the CCPD. She is wearing some person's face. She unmasks herself to Joe and she's back and basically she's out of hiding and she's here to help essentially. So. Yeah, Eva wants to grow an army. You get an Invasion of the Body Snatchers reference from Chester. I thought that was very funny because it kind of is true. Literally, she is taking over people's bodies and she is snatching their bodies like the Invasion of the Body Snatchers. So yeah, great reference right there. Okay, so Allegra talks to Iris. And I thought this point in the episode was a little bit strange because she's like, boss, the citizen is nothing without you. And I just thought it was a weird character to have pleading for Iris to be fine. Like, I get that you're friends. However, I feel like it should have been like Cisco or probably Caitlyn, actually, who should have been that person apart from Barry because Barry's obviously been doing this already throughout the episode because she is his wife after all. But someone closer than Allegra, I don't know, it just felt a little bit off. Let me know down in the comments down below, did you think that as well? And so it's at this point that Barry disappears, he's pulled into a mirror by Eva, and she basically reveals her plan, and she calls herself a mother, and she is creating all of these new versions of herself, and so Barry is kind of exposed by Eva, saying that basically she can create a better world than he has actually done because even with all of Barry's power he hasn't been able to solve the things that she gives as examples. So I thought that was a very telling point in the episode and I thought it was very good and at this point it's pretty clear that I think Eva is going to come around some point in the episode because she shows Barry mercy, she basically says I'm not the villain essentially 
and so Barry is led back into the real world by Eva. This is obviously after he's been told her whole plan. And just right after this, this leads to one of the most interesting twists of the episode, and this is Barry meeting the original Wells as he materializes. Now, this was an interesting twist because I wasn't sure how they were going to go ahead with the original world stuff. Like, would he know where he was? Was he only going to Star Labs because he recognized it? But no, in this case, he has all of Nash's memories. He has those other versions of Wells still with inside him. And they did go with the explanation that made the most sense and that I kind of figured they would go with. He has like a whole theory board that he brings up and he's like, this is why I returned. And so basically it's his bones were like the last remnant of Wells and they latched onto him and basically he was recreated. So that's why this version of Wells is here. And it's revealed at the end of the episode that he can literally time travel, he can go anywhere. So he's very, very OP. And basically, this is a cause of crisis. Now, I thought this was very interesting that they rooted it literally straight to the crisis and they gave him all of Nash's memories. And so I think he's definitely going to return at some point in this season. I don't think he's just leaving after the end of this episode. I feel like at one point they're definitely going to reel him back into the story. And I know that Tom has been around on the set, so... I feel like, yeah, he's definitely going to come back. And so he knows that, like, Barry's the paragon of love. At one point, he says, run, Barry, run. However, not like he does later in the episode where he basically motivates Barry to get his speed back whilst Iris is helping him. But in this case, he says, run towards love. And so I thought that was kind of a nice fitting twist on the normal run, Barry, run quote. Okay, so Wells meets Team Flash. You have all of them back. And then he's like, I'm the original. And I got chills. I was really excited that he literally referred to himself as the original Wells and I just thought I was really nice for us fans because that's what we call him, the original Wells, and we've called him that for years. So, I mean, it's just really exciting to see a version of Wells that we've only briefly glimpsed and now he's like an amalgamation of all these different Wellses because he's got them and their memories inside of him. I thought it was a neat twist and it's nice that we have a version of Wells out there in the multiverse. And so Team Flash are like, why is this version of Wells here? And he basically explains why he's back. Okay, so let's move on. Like I said, we have the Ralph stuff. At first, he's melting. Very funny. Sue shows up again, and she is basically working with Ralph. And Ralph is still portrayed as a hero throughout this episode. And he's gone off still a hero, and he's going into hiding. And supposedly, he's going to come back at some point, but we'll have to wait and see. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. So Barry wakes up, Iris. And so this is the biggest point in the episode apart from the ending. Well, it's very linked to the ending. This is all about the speed force. And so Barry wakes up Iris by touching her. And so it's all about Iris being Barry's lightning rod. Well, it turns out she is the literal lightning rod for the speed force because he felt a speed force connection, a speed force spark with inside Iris when he touched her hand. So we kind of figured at some point that we're going to get this original speed force, this natural speed force back, because as they said in this episode, the artificial speed force is completely unsustainable. And the way that they went around it was a very nice twist. So they talk about how Barry and Iris, like their daughter, had a mix of their speed force lightning because Iris was once a speedster. Barry has his lightning, that's why Nora's lightning was purple and yellow, so that is the actual explanation for why she had that color lightning. I thought that was interesting because they've never actually touched on why Nora had that mix of lightning. However, they basically confirmed it in this episode, so I thought that was nice. And so the natural speed force is back, and this is with the help of the original Wells who aids them because as you know, this version of Wells is really smart and in the original timeline, this version of Wells in 2020, which is currently where the show is right now, at the end of the season six storyline, well, in episode seven of season three, they're still in 2020. And so this version of Wells would go on to create Star Labs, create the particle accelerator, have it explode, and it causes the original Flash to be born because he gets his speed force powers from there. So this version of Wells is very smart, and in whatever timeline, he always has some sort of impact on giving the Flash his speed back or for the first time. Okay, so Wells suggests that they are completely reckless with their idea to get Barry's speed back. And so basically you see Iris 
and Iris has been like comatose this whole episode. She's been on the bed and she's been completely out of action. But she just walks into the speed lab like nothing else. She gets her hands out and she touches the fusion spear with her bare hands without even hesitating. I was like, damn, Iris, that's kind of badass, you know? Because she walks in there fearless and she's like, Barry's got to get his speed back. So Barry begins to run. And now this is really interesting because it really links back into what would be the cliffhanger of season six. Obviously, we're going to get an answer to this much sooner because we don't have to wait like months until the next episode. No, we literally wait a week and I'm sure we're going to get some sort of mini answer and we'll get the bigger explanation as we go throughout the next couple of episodes. And so in this scene, the Speed Force returns as Barry runs as fast as he can. So with Barry gaining his speed back, Iris's eyes actually light up with Speed Force energy, basically saying that she is the conduit for the Speed Force. Like, that is the only reason why the Speed Force still exists. And it's that connection between Iris and Barry that basically transcends dimensions. That's what they were getting at, and that's why the Speed Force is back. And that's why Barry is able to find that connection again and he is the Flash fully functioning with speed. So I thought it was a neat twist that they made Iris the key. Obviously we kind of suggested that something like this could happen. However, a lot of us were theorizing that maybe the original Worlds would be the one to create like a new particle accelerator explosion. But no, they came up with another idea. I feel like some people are going to be a little bit annoyed about this because it didn't happen over the course of a couple of episodes and it happened pretty fast. However, I thought it was a good explanation and I think it definitely works. And so you have a few nice lines like, you'll always be my lightning rod. And so a fully powered, suited up Barry hugs Iris like he's never hugged her before. And so just before we move on to the next bit, the final kind of big battle with Eva, we have to talk about what Wells does in this scene. So. During Barry getting his speed back, Wells takes a long glance at Barry and in his general vicinity. So that moment had me like, what the hell is going on? Why is he staring and why are we not seeing the reaction shot to that? However, that is revealed right at the end of the episode because we get a flashback and we'll go to that actually right now. So yeah, Wells takes a long glance towards Barry and what he sees here is what happens at the end of the episode. So it flashes back to exactly when Barry got his powers. And so Barry's lightning shoots up into the air with green and red, yellow and blue lightning. Now, I kind of freaked out. I was like, what the hell is going on? And I'm sure you guys did too. So now this is kind of crazy because the first thought that went into my head was this. This is like a new speed force storm. This is gonna create new speedsters, at least one new speedster possibly like three or four new speedsters because you have the different lightning colors. Now, if you do your research, you can find something very recent in the comics that relates to this, and that is the Sage Force. Now, this is very new and it was introduced in The Flash issue 61 recently. So what is the Sage Force, you ask? Well, it's not a super well-known thing. However, it has always existed and supposedly has always existed in the Arrowverse if they follow what went on in the comics because there are these other three forces that are separate from the normal speed force and the negative speed force. However, these forces have lied dormant for a long time due to a force barrier. That is what they called it in the comics. And so that barrier was broken by Zoom in the comics and it basically allowed him to tap into the Sage and Strength Forces. And also there is another force called the Still Force. Now you guys might be asking why the different colors? Well, the different forces have different colors and that basically signifies what force it is. So the Speed Force is yellow and this is obviously Barry's power. That is the thing that he taps into. And the Sage Force is just an extreme version of empathy, kind of like Cecile's powers, where you can connect with someone else. However, when you connect too much, you basically go into their thoughts and you get lost in their thoughts and you become overwhelmed by this. So it's kind of to do with telepathy and mind control a little bit. That is what is going on with the Sage Force. And so that is the blue lightning you're seeing. The red lightning is the strength force. 
and I think the strength force basically explains it for itself. It uses super strength and increased durability and they are able to manipulate gravity. So that is the red lightning and so the final piece of lightning is the green lightning. Now you might be wondering what is the green lightning? Well that is the still force and so this isn't anything too big and it's a opposing force to speedsters and it's basically anyone that doesn't have speed force powers or anything related to that. It's just a part of Barry that slows down and stops. That is the explanation they give in the comics. So that's kind of what's going on there and shout out to Peiji for actually realizing this at first. When he said it, I was like, holy shit, why didn't I think of that? However, now I've gone in, I looked at it again and I was like, yes, this is totally the Sage Force, the Strength Force, the Steel Force, and the Speed Force. So with this, they are totally going to introduce different speedsters or different superpower beings with these different forces. And I reckon they might use this as an explanation for this new God Speed that we're going to be seeing. They said that what happens as they try to defeat Eva would have a direct consequence to the birth of a new villain. So definitely something was born out of those forces that went up into the air with the different color lightnings. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back and catch up on the rest of the episode because we just skipped forward to the ending because, you know, we're talking about the Speed Force and it coming back officially. So that's super exciting. Well, let's go over to the final battle. So Eva is technically faster than Barry. So at the start of the fight, Barry doesn't use his speed, but he actually does use his speed later. So I don't know why he was using it because he can't defeat her. And so at one point he gets knocked out by Eva. And so you have Team Flash teaming up against these mirror clones of Eva and so you have Vibe showing up in his Vibe suit. I think this is a new suit so really cool to see him out there fighting with Killer Frost and it looks like Barry has a cool new lightning trick that you saw on the roof. Just thought I would mention that because that was a very cool part of the CGI fight that was going on between him and Eva and so Iris shows up against Eva and it turns out she has powers outside of the Mirrorverse However, it seems like it's very linked to Eva being around. But for now, she had powers. I was like, oh my god, this is very cool. She is literally holding these mirror shards and she is basically disarming Eva. And so, as predicted, Iris is the key factor in taking down Eva because they have that connection. And so, Eva tries to call off her clones. She isn't able to call off her clones. And so, Team Flash, that being Iris and Barry only, they hold Eva's hands and basically their powers combined stops those clones and so they get shattered, they get destroyed and you have the return of characters like Singh who shows up in CCBD. We also have the return of Camilla. Cisco freaks out when he gets the phone call. That was a nice moment and so Eva says her goodbye and she's basically gone and she's going back to the Mirrorverse so that is the last time we're going to see Eva for a long time. So yeah, goodbye Eva, and uh, I guess we'll see you soon. I don't know, she was like a pretty okay villain, not the worst villain ever. However, I guess we can do a lot better than that. Okay, so Iris is meta. However, their explanation is she's not going to have powers because Eva has gone back to the Mirrorverse and I guess most of that multiversal Mirrorverse particles are not with her anymore. However, I do think the explanation is a bit shabby because I feel like it doesn't matter that Eva wasn't there because Iris was really powerful without Eva. So I don't know if that's like the perfect explanation, but that's what's going on. So you're not going to see Iris with powers anymore, basically. That's what they're saying. Okay, so Original Worlds leaves. I kind of figured that he was going to leave at some point throughout this episode because I don't think that they would bring and keep in such an overpowered Wells. And so it turns out he is Timeless Wells. I thought that was a nice name they kind of gave him at the end of the episode because he says his goodbye to Allegra and Cisco inside the time vault and I guess it was pretty cool that they were in that room because it's very fitting with this version of Wells and so he chooses to go back and experience those four years of his life with Tess because he is basically able to time travel anywhere and so Cisco is like how can you time travel and he's like like this and he literally disappears and I thought that was very cool and so Cisco talks to the original Wells about the other versions of Wells and how he's pretty similar and how it's a bit weird that he's talking to this version that he literally knows nothing about. And obviously throughout this episode, everyone has been kind of shell-shocked by him because he is the original Wells and they did not expect another version of Wells to ever show up again. So yeah, he leaves, Allegra says bye, Cisco says bye, and uh, he basically disintegrates and time travels. So yeah, that was a cool end to Wells and... 
the original Wells and maybe we'll see him more later this season, I do presume. However, let's move on to the last thing we need to talk about because we did talk about that big ending cliffhanger already. So Ralph has his goodbye, he wears this kind of bee suit and I was like, hmm, again, funny way to include him and like there is a few funny lines of dialogue but it still feels a bit weird and so Sue is offered a role in Team Flash and she leaves and basically they're gonna go off and they're going to take down organizations around the world kind of similar to Black Hole so I guess that's what she's gonna be doing for now however Sue is gonna come back Ralph has the potential to come back however they did a good job at hiding his identity because obviously Harley Sawyer wasn't gonna come back after being fired so I thought they did a pretty good job wrapping up the Ralph story in a funny way, kind of like how Ralph would probably go out anyway. But that's about it for this video, thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you enjoyed the episode and if you did enjoy my video please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my videos tomorrow because we're going to be breaking down and reviewing Superman Lois episode 4. Also, we're going to be doing my trailer breakdown for the next episode of The Flash. So please don't miss out on any of those videos. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.